Can an airplane land in strong crosswinds? Why do pilots sometimes make a circle around the city before landing? Am I really going to need to use this barf bag? These are just some of the most common questions about one of the most <clears throat> interesting parts of the flight. Let's get them answered. Why do planes point up even when they're flying down? You can notice it's way harder to walk to the front of the plane than to the back. And cabin crew never lets go of those service trolleys. And even when it's descent time, pilots still don't point the nose down. In fact, it's not the direction of the nose, but power that makes the plane go up or down. Turn the power up, and it will start climbing, and vice versa. The direction of the nose speeds up or slows down the plane, so an aircraft preparing for landing is usually nose up to slow down. Why do pilots dim cabin lights during landing? Seeing cabin lights go down on descent can be unnerving, but nothing's really wrong. First, it helps save some much-needed energy during this critical part of the flight. It's way more important to control the brakes and the generator than to let you finish your in-flight reading, right? The second reason is safety. If you have to leave the plane quickly in an emergency when it's dark outside, it will be easier for you to see floor lights guiding to the exit and for your eyes to adapt when cabin lights are dimmed. Do runway light patterns have a meaning? Well, I'm just guessing here, but I think it means land here, dummy. Actually, they start long before the runway to guide the plane during landing. And there is a whole system of visual aids made of red and white light patterns. They let the pilot know if the plane is on a perfect path to the runway. The ideal position is two red and two white lights. Four white lights or three white and one red means the plane is too high. And four red lights or three red and one white let the pilot know they're below the perfect path. Why do pilots sometimes dump fuel before landing? The landing can be really hard if the plane weighs as much as it does when taking off. Normally, there's just enough fuel in a commercial plane, so it's almost all gone by the time it descends. But in case of emergency, like when there's a technical issue, or a passenger is not feeling well and the plane must land way sooner than planned, pilots have to get rid of the extra fuel immediately. They activate a system of pumps and valves, and it flies out of the wings where it's mostly stored. Do planes really talk to pilots just before landing? Well, there comes a moment before landing when the pilot must decide if they are ready to aim for the runway or have to make a go-around. This point is called a decision altitude or decision height. While they are still thinking, the plane can remind them to do it already. On many planes, including the popular 747, a mechanical voice loudly and clearly says just one word, decide. I heard next year they're coming out with, hey, decide already, I'm flying here, I'm flying here. What do pilots call the ground effect? The feeling of resting on the ground when you're still in the air is called the ground effect. When the plane is in the air, there's a lot of space between the wings and the ground. When you're about to land though, the air becomes super compressed and feels like a pillow. It's mostly the pilots who experience it. But if you have a window seat, you can also feel as if you were floating on a soft air pillow above the ground for the final 15 to 20 seconds of descent. Have you ever felt it, perhaps? Hey, let me know in the comments. Why is landing often bumpy? At cruising altitude, pilots will normally try to avoid turbulence by slightly changing the route. But the runway is where it is, and if pilots have to go through rough air to get there, they'll do it. In fact, a rough landing has its benefits. When a plane descends too slowly and floats above the runway, it leaves less room for braking. This can be a real problem on shorter runways. And a firm landing is always the safest in slippery conditions with rain, slush, snow, or ice on the runway. Why is descent so long compared to takeoff? Well, getting up to cruising altitude normally only takes about 10 or 15 minutes. But when it's time to descend, the crew will often finish their service and ask you to get ready 40 or even 50 minutes before actual landing. This is because it's not just the distance to the airport or plane speed that matters here. In most cases, air traffic control tells pilots when to start descending. They plan it in such a way to avoid air traffic jams, especially at busy airports. To avoid any accidents, planes can't just all land in the shortest diagonal from the same distance. Why do planes sometimes make a big circle around the city before landing? Well, they call it an approach or a holding pattern, 
and any aerophobe will describe it as a nightmare. There is nothing dangerous or wrong with being on hold, though. Try to think of the sky as a busy highway, with each plane on its own lane. When they have to merge at some point, you don't want them to collide, so it's better to wait a bit. And when it's okay to land, a plane will rarely fly right over downtown where the buildings are super tall. There are set paths for each runway, and they mostly go around the city. Why do they land sideways in strong crosswinds? Airplanes are built in such a way as to withstand strong crosswinds. But passengers don't feel comfortable, to say the least, when a plane starts uncontrollably shaking approaching the ground. Landing in such weather conditions requires some serious skills from pilots, and that's a maneuver they start practicing as soon as they begin flight training. They call it crabbing and slipping. Crabbing, in pilot slang, means pointing the nose of the plane right into the wind. At this moment, the aircraft is moving sideways, much like a crab. The pilot has to adapt the angle of the nose to the speed and direction of the wind. Those may change in a matter of moments in gusty conditions, so the task is really challenging. When the runway eventually appears from beneath a thick layer of clouds, it could be way off to the left or to the right of the nose. So when the plane approaches the ground, they have to change technique from crabbing to slipping. That means adjusting the plane parallel to the runway, tipping the wings into the wind the way it should be in normal conditions. Even the most experienced pilots sometimes can't handle extreme crosswinds and go sideways on the ground before going back up for a second attempt. So when winds are really too bad, the safest option is to delay the flight altogether. How do planes land in zero visibility? Thunderstorms, snow, and fog all reduce visibility and make safe landing a challenge. In general, pilots need at least a half a mile visibility to complete the flight. When it's lower than that, the airport must have special equipment to guide the plane to the ground. It includes special lighting along the runway, visibility measurement gear, and radio navigation called the instrument landing system. When it's foggy, air traffic controllers basically become the extra eyes for the pilot and guide them through every tiny step of landing. And finally, about using that barf bag? Well, it's there for your convenience, but I don't think you'll really need it. On the other hand, I get it wrong a lot, so be prepared. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life!